Humanity has been lied to on all sorts of subjects. Entire pieces of history have been erased and therefore forgotten. This has been deliberately done by those in power and the aim of it is to make us forget who and especially what we actually are. Most of us are beings of infinite consciousness and we have a mission to accomplish. However, in the past people who knew more about this have often been burned at the stake, were converted by Christians or silenced in other ways. Censorship is still a powerful tool for those in power. Many people are aware of the fact that life is much more than what we imagine and that there is much going on between heaven and earth. Awake people are also aware that we are currently living in a special time and that there is a war going on that encompasses much more than a health crisis or climate problems. There is a war going on, the battlefields in the mind, and the prize is the soul. So, let's be careful. Be very careful. Thank you. There's something going on that affects the human existence for a very long time, and the core of it goes way back in history. It's becoming only currently more visible to people. But what's going on? What kind of war are we drawn into? Researching missing or withheld information takes an enormous amount of time. Old texts need to be read and investigated. Finds must be viewed. Interpretations should be made on the basis of findings and not be inferred from preconceived incorrect information. It is the needle in the haystack that sometimes has to be found in order to find out more and good information about our past. There are people who spend their days doing research and who share information about all kinds of facets of our history that we've been lied about. I'm also such a person and my focus is directed on the religious heritage of the earth. In my case that led to a large format book of 600 pages and I'm currently working on a sequel. But I'm aware that not everyone likes to read and I'm originally Dutch so my reach is not wide. I would like to share information with people that speak other languages than the Dutch language and who want to learn more about the ancient heritage left to us by our ancestors. That's why I decided to share my findings in this way, through a series with different episodes. I apologize in advance for grammatical errors I make in the English language. The information I want to share has to do with an ancient light religion that was known all over the earth. Those who were later followers of this religion clung to the past and still knew all about the infinite consciousness that people possess. They also knew how to contact their gods and how to work with the forces of nature. Their religion was very extensive but has been wiped out. Some of their information was adopted by new religions but many times in twisted forms. I want to shed some light on what these earthly ancestors had to tell us. I hope the knowledge of their ancient light awakens something in people. In addition, I will also in later episodes pay attention to the enemies of these ancient light teachings. These enemies are still active in manipulating and indoctrinating humanity to make people forget their origins. It is important to recognize these enemies. 
There's so much to tell about the ancient light religion of our ancestors that I hardly know where to start. Because some changing events can be traced back to a reset that took place on the earth in the distant past, I decided in this episode to start with a piece of forgotten history that has to do with the sun. This moment forms also a base for the conditions of our current existence. When we look at the sun, we see a yellow fireball. And in history books it is told that many of our ancestors were sun worshippers. But that information is only partly correct, because the sun looked very different in ancient times. Our pagan ancestors did not worship the yellow sun that we see every day. They regarded this yellow sun as a killer, who not only made the moon and stars disappear, but also caused people, animals and plants to die of hunger and thirst as a result of the heat. This yellow sun had become visible after a small elite group had initiated a reset which changed the entire sky image. The fact that we now see a yellow sun has to do with this event in the past that can be called a great reset. It was a major catastrophe, causing the old sun to split, which resulted in a changed temperature on the earth. After the catastrophe with the old sun, the sun seemed to have changed its color, because the yellow sun showed itself, and the earth became extremely hot. Many old peoples therefore began to associate that new sun with a lot of negativity. The Codex Chimal Popoca, one of the sacred books of the Mexican Toltecs, describes a destruction on earth in which a sun played a key role. They tell that this sun showered the planet with a fire that was so violent that even stones boiled. The whole sun was on fire and destroyed during this event a big part of humanity. The Toltec said only those who could flee to the sea were spared. Especially in the Polynesian culture, many similar stories can be found about this catastrophe that clarify that the sky image completely changed. They speak of a preceding war in heaven, by which heavenly pillars were broken, while the earth shook to its foundations. As a result, the sun and stars moved differently, planets changed their course, and the great harmony of nature was disrupted. Those who investigate the by the ancients described changes of the sun will discover that this moment was accompanied with all kinds of strange events in the sky. Many of these peoples knew that the sun looked before that time very different and talk about a yellow sun that became the new sun. The Polynesians say that its new sun needed time to find balance. In Tahiti it is said that its new sun shot through the sky so super fast that fruit could not ripen and woven mats had no time to dry. Legends of virtually all inhabitants of the tropical islands of the Pacific tell that the days were suddenly very short after this event. The sun seems to have found balance, but it still affects us as well in a negative way. Solar storms are an example of this, because they can completely obscure the earth, resulting in magnetic disturbances. In 1859 there was a solar storm as powerful as 10 billion detonated atomic bombs. It resulted in a shower of electrically charged particles with magnetic disturbances in a way that telegraphs in America and Europe caught fire. In 1972 a solar flare destroyed several telephone lines in the United States, 
and in 1989 there was a blackout in Canada due to a solar storm. Sometimes the sun contains also gaping sun holes. NASA reported on this in 2017. The hole was 40 Earths wide and was characterized by radioactive solar winds. According to scientists, disasters such as plagues and rebellions have occurred every time after such holes were visible in the past. The tragedy during 9-11 is an example of this. Russian researchers discovered a correlation between solar flares and people's moods. These are peak moments when our pineal gland is negatively affected. People become anxious and depressed because of this, and these are periods when even more suicides are committed. The sun can therefore still cause quite a few inconveniences, and people clearly had a lot of trouble with that in the past. In Polynesian lore, it is reported that the son of their lunar mother goddess attempted to capture the altered sun and that he succeeded to link it to the movements of the moon. In this way, he protected his lunar mother. She then climbed to the moon to secure seasons and resources. I will speak about this lunar mother and her son in detail in a subsequent episode. They are both members of the ancient religion of light and have been known all over the earth. Interesting about these stories is the information that after the changes in the sky the moon suddenly appeared and that an important function was assigned to it. Indigenous peoples, such as the Puchikwa of the Andaman Islands in India, said that the moon was a gift given by a pair of gods from the light world, who lived in a place where it was always pleasant. The Puchikwa felt a deep connection with the moon, as did all worshippers of the ancient light, and they hoped that they would end up in that world of light after death. If we are to believe scientists, the moon is millions of years old, but it clearly moved into a different orbit after the catastrophe. At least the moon was invisible for a while, because the Arcadians and Native Americans said that there was during a moment in time no moon at all for a while. The moon that had become visible was regarded by those who remembered the old light, and they considered it to be a reflector that could still glimpse the original light of the former sun that had suddenly disappeared. The changed sun had a lot of effect on earthly religions, because in newly formed religions people began to worship that new yellow sun. Old gods connected to the older sun were transformed by these worshippers into new gods that belonged to the new yellow sun. Followers of these new religions became active in worshipping the new yellow sun that still shows itself during the day. The old religion of those who still remembered the old sun, however, also persisted. Its worshippers paid special attention to the moon and were active at night. The moon has therefore remained an extremely sacred object for this group since ancient times. Those who remained faithful to the older religion kept their eyes on the moon as the interpreter of the former disappeared sun. In preserved information about these ancient moon worshippers, it appears that they viewed the catastrophe that had occurred as a conflict that took place on earth as well as in heaven. The event also involved so much more than a change of the temperature on earth and the different color of the new sun. The Polynesians report that after this horrific event, 
A new sun god abused the blue vault to run into the world, and that the changed sun had little eye for life forms on earth and for earth's nature. And this also applied to an elite group of yellow sun worshippers who lived on earth. They've always done everything they could to make the changed sun important to mankind. They did this not only by forming new sun religions in various places on the earth, but also by destroying those who remained faithful to the old religion and the old light. The mighty sun worshippers made a new dark sun god important and thereby expelled the old gods of the ancient religion of light. The old stories sparked an interest in me, as they clarify that after this old reset, a portal was opened through which a god from another world could enter, who before that time could not reach earth. It is reminiscent of what's going on at the moment, because those who are a little awake know that the throne of the Antichrist in Jerusalem is currently being prepared. With not much imagination, we are able to realize that we have now become bogged down into a reset again. We can learn a lot from history, because a characteristic of happenings in our world is that they repeat themselves over and over again. And it also gets the chance to repeat itself because other voices are extinguished by means of censorship. The ancient history of the altered sun therefore raises quite a few questions. Because what did the sun look like before the catastrophe that occurred in ancient times? And in what way did this old sun connect with the ancient religion of light? An answer to this question can be found in ancient Egypt, for example, because the Egyptians did not describe the sun as an orange or yellow light. According to them, the sun moved through the sky like a boat of radiant blue light. So according to them, the sun was blue. It ties in with what the Roman scholar and philosopher Macrobius wrote, for he too said that the sun is still pure and blue before it reaches the horizon. From this it can be concluded that the blue sun is hiding behind the yellow sun, that the yellow sun partly still consists of a blue part or that something is blocking the sun, preventing us from seeing the original and true blue color. Since 1881, several physicists and astronomers have also concluded that the sun is actually blue. Scientists such as Professor Langley of the Royal Institution in London confirmed this fact. When Langley studied the Earth's atmosphere, he concluded that the apparent color of the sun has to do with our atmosphere, but concluded that the sun is actually blue. A yellow sun and a blue sun. It can be explained somewhat because Earth's atmosphere provides a somewhat different color spectrum. Due to the blue radiation of the sun, the sky appears blue during the day and the sun appears yellow, when in reality the color of the sky is black and the sun is blue or blue-green. So the sun only looks orange or yellow to us because the sun rays change color when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. These colors would be created by the metallic fumes in the atmosphere. Because of the two colors mentioned, it is somewhat reminiscent of a burning gas burner with flames that can also take on the colors blue and yellow. 
but this all clarifies that something in the atmosphere changed and that because of that the sun could no longer show itself as a blue sphere. The French physicist Louis Houlevic, a professor at the faculty of Marseille, provided a simple explanation in a popular scientific publication during his time. In it he told more about how we perceive the sun. He wrote that all daylight comes to us through the sun and that it reaches us in two ways. One form is direct light that forms the sun rays and the other form consists of everything that withdraws from this direct radiation and in which the blue predominates. According to Hulevik, the blue of the sky is stolen from the sun itself and shows the true color of this star. He said we could see the blue color of the sun if we were able to rise up to 100 kilometers above the diffusing layers. And this has been confirmed by astronauts who have been able to see the sun in a different way than we do for they have also reported that the sun is blue. In the Sahara the sun sometimes even shows itself as a blue ball and that is also sometimes the case in China. These belated publications teach us that the sun is actually blue. But it remains astonishing that Egyptian priests already knew this and that they were absolutely right. So people who think that the ancient Egyptians revered the yellow sun are wrong. They worshipped the blue sun and a light blue colored chief god as the interpreter of this hidden sun. This god had help from a whole range of gods and goddesses, usually depicted in blue or white. The blue sun was regarded by the ancient Egyptians as the life giver, which, like the blue and white of the Nile, is believed to be the source of all life. Their original gods are all descended from the moment before the catastrophe happened and are all connected to the time when the previously blue sun shone the earth. Their most venerable god of light invariably shown in blue was only worshipped when the yellow sun had set and thus was no longer visible. It was simply a custom to perform rituals for the blue sun after the yellow sun disappeared. Rites for this old encompassing blue power were always performed at night when the light of that hidden sun could still reach the earth through the moon. Of course new religions also arose in Egypt in which the yellow sun was made important. That happened all over the world. But traditionally in Egypt the yellow sun was not important at all. It was the old light that was revered and that was the blue light that still could only show itself a bit when it got dark. For that reason, during the ancient initiations in Egypt, every religious initiate was slowly prepared to make a connection with this ancient blue light. The Egyptian blue sun worshippers had much in common with western pagan moon worshippers, who also knew that only the moon still receives the true light of the old color of the sun and is able to reflect it. These pagans also knew that human consciousness grew by making contact with this blue power source through the moon. Those who did not want to let go the old religion of light have therefore continued to worship the moon. An origin of the religion surrounding the blue sun can be found in the sunken continent of Atlantis, of which Egypt was a colony. 
the most exalted concept of the main god of the ancient Egyptians, that light blue hidden sun, clearly recalls an ancient religion which was already known before the disappearance of Atlantis. It was a source of power that reminded people of good times when people and animals lived still on an equal footing and everyone had a direct contact with the gods. I'll come back to this in detail in the next episode, but it explains why natural materials with a blue color or blue reflection have always been considered in ancient times as references to Atlantis and why people liked to work with them so much. Different type of blue stones functioned as transmitters to make contact with the gods of the blue light. Blue remained for a long time the color that was connected to the ancient Atlantis and the color made people remember the energy of a divine force that I choose to call the Absolute. Blue always referred to the much loved place that had gone down so brutally when the blue sun changed. The color functioned as a reminder of a time when it was still very pleasant to live on earth. There are all kinds of ancient cultures that still remember the existence of the blue sun well and a remarkable amount of information about it has been preserved by the Native Americans. For example, the Thompson River Indians tell how a boy gave a blue jade blanket to the sun so that it was still able to show beautiful blue tones at sunset. Several Indian tribes also know a lot about the period in which people lived in the center of what they called the blue. It was a time when animals still had a voice and communicated freely. A division has developed on earth between those who revered the old blue sun and those who fell for the new yellow light. The latter have often been labeled as earth innovators. The fact that the worship of the yellow sun has largely won explains why the religion surrounding the old blue light has increasingly fallen into oblivion. The new religions that place their focus on the yellow sun have caused a reversal that has always plagued those who believed in the old religion of the blue light. They have been murdered and burned at the stake or subjected to conversions to new religions such as Christianity. Their most sacred animals became sacrificial animals within the newly developed religions and they had to moan to give strength to their dark worshippers like any other living being they sacrificed. Those in power have really done everything they can to extinguish the religion of the old light and they have quite succeeded. Just ask people the simple question if they know what the true color of the sun is and you'll find out they don't know the answer. Across cultures such as the Algonquin, an indigenous people of eastern Canada, stories emerge of a battle between light and dark forces and all of which have to do with the changed sun that was visible in the sky. It sparked a struggle that is still surprisingly topical today. I've decided to start making films of what I'm researching. I made that decision partly because my research requires a lot of time and the book to which it will lead will still need much more time. I've learned to connect with the old blue light in all kinds of ways and therefore learned and discovered a lot about it. It is a force that I believe we need to learn more about, especially now that the earth is once again in a phase of a turning point and there is again talk of a global reset by those in power. The essence I want to point out in this first part is that I want to clarify that most religions on earth can be divided into roughly two types, which have everything to do with the celestial catastrophe 
that took place in the distant past. The old religion is in connection with the blue sun and uses the moon as an aid for this purpose. This religion is characterized by a lifestyle in which people and animals are not sacrificed or hurt. Animals are neither hunted nor eaten, but rather embraced as brothers and sisters. The path within this religion is an upward path and it is based on the development of each individual soul. A characteristic of this ancient blue light religion is that both the main gods and helpers can be seen and contacted and that friendly relations between these gods and humans can arise on the basis of a principle of equality. Revelations provided by these gods and entities among others are personal and depend on the stages of the individual follower. The entities known within this religion are not saints but helpers. They often show themselves with a moon circle or blue sun on or behind their heads. The knowledge disseminated within this religion is evolving and bound texts are not compulsively held to. Many who followed this ancient religion have been reviled, discredited and massacred, including the Druids, various Gnostics and the Cathars. Yet there are still groups that know this religion, such as various Indian tribes and many Polynesians and Maori. Many of their gods are equivalents to each other, and I will tell you more about them in the future. In addition, several pagan groups are still active in the practice of this old religion, although they have often become victims of interference so that what is practice is not always so pure. Pagan ancestors left us all kinds of tangible signs and objects to help us to get to know more about this religion, but many of those excavated objects which have been found all over the earth have been discarded by historians and not well researched. The opposite religion, crafted on the yellow sun, has often been labeled in history books as that of innovators. This new form of sun worship was given a lot of power in the western world, for example by the Romans, who are often praised in a compulsive and unjustified way in history books. The basic religion of the yellow sun is characterized by worship of the sun as a heavenly yellow light and as a heavenly representative. Within the religions that grew out of this, sacrifices have been the order of the day and many animals are still sacrificed to serve the god that is at the basis of this form of sun worship. Sacrificial animals have especially become those animals that were and are important and sacred to the contrasting religion. Followers of the religions that grew out of the worship of the yellow sun have no problem eating animals and feel themselves superior to animals. They submit to their gods or god in exchange for revelations and demand submission from others as well. From that point of view, they have forcibly converted many followers of the old religion of light. I deliberately describe the former mentioned in a quite generalizing way in order to be able to properly show the main differences. In reality it is not quite as black and white as it seems. Mixtures arose from the two main groups which sometimes try to serve the best of both groups. An example of this are the Manichaeans who were considered Christian heretics in the Middle Ages. Manichaeism is the name of a Gnostic religion that grew out of the ideas of Mani. 
Manichaeans believed in Jesus, but also believed that demonic forces imprison a core within humans that prevents them from returning to the divine world. Manichaeans set themselves the goal of serving good as much as possible by liberating everything from darkness. They therefore lived a vegetarian life and believed that anyone who hurt a person or animal injured the light and thereby automatically let the darkness grow. Mixtures of the two different religions also sometimes led to confusion, which was precisely the intention from the point of view of those in power who made the worship of the yellow sun important. Several saints from the new sun religions have been adopted directly from the ancient pagans that worshipped the blue sun and the moon. Their old blue gods have sometimes been transformed into solar variants that no longer resemble the much older versions. The god Osiris is an example of it, and information about him shows clearly how incorrect interpretations arise. Whoever writes something about Osiris will first have to investigate whether it concerns the old or renewed Osiris. In other words, it is necessary to distinguish if the Osiris written about mainly has to do with the moon and the blue light or with the Osiris that was changed and drawn to the yellow sun by the new sun worshippers. Usually, such in-depth research is not done and this results in all sorts of ambiguities. There are also saints who have been directly adopted by leaders that created foundations for the new sun religion. Archangel Michael is an example of this. He was a unifying force within paganism and the son of the moon goddess. He was directly adopted and maintained within new formed religions because he was so loved and therefore difficult to eradicate. Michael has kept his blue glow. And then there are also variants of religious key figures who have become two different characters. The Jesus venerated by ancient Gnostics and the later Cathars was very different than the Jesus Catholicism preaches about. The name God became a name for the all-encompassing principle of ecclesiastical religions, but is derived from a title given to one of the principal gods of the pagans that had a connection with the blue light. It's important to note that from the sun worshippers emerged an elite that can be regarded as the Cabal. These mostly leading figures, although hidden in the background, don't feel a special connection with the yellow sun, but worship especially the Sol Niger, the black sun. This sun is equal to the planet Saturn and the associated god Saturn of the same name, who is mainly kept satisfied with blood sacrifices. The goal of the Cabal, which was behind the reset in the past, has not ceased to exist and will eventually draw every follower of a sun worship infused religion to Saturn worship. This is done in a somewhat devious way. For example, followers of religions that arose from the yellow sun are often encouraged to make bloody sacrifices, which can be directly traced back to Saturn worship. So several people give honor to the bloodthirsty god worshipped by the Cabal without really knowing it. Altar rituals, such as drinking the blood and eating the body, exemplify customs derived from Saturn worship. Groups of Christians who have steered clear of this have often been reviled and called heretics. The link with the planet Saturn 
also clarifies why religions that originated from yellow sun worship often portray halos around heads of saints. This ring around the head is a reference to the visible ring around the planet Saturn. The switch to actual Saturn worship and thus to the Lord of the Rings will not be so huge for some people in the future because of this kind of symbolism. The Cabal follows a script that also was applied in Atlantis, where after a long period of growth and prosperity, a group of Saturn worshippers gained power. After their dark period of Saturnian reign, the continent sank. In that end time of Atlantis, the continent carried even a changed name, which was the name Saturn. Each empire dedicated to Saturn subjugates people. Stories show that such kingdoms have existed on Earth several times and have always caused a lot of misery. I'll come back to that in a future episode, but the script of drawing people to Saturn worship has been carried out for a long time with appropriate symbolism which is now also becoming visual again. It's important to note that Voltaire cryptically described the ancient land of Saturn as a place where no one had his face anymore. So we can conclude we are on our way as humanity to fulfill the Cabal's wet dream. And the offerings are different now. Solar flares of the yellow sun affect the pineal gland in a negative way, but the gland is currently being affected even more negatively. This gland must have had a powerful connection with the blue sun because of its connection with spiritual thoughts, mystical experiences, awakenings and enlightenment. It's now being damaged. If you take a look at the two main energetic forces that are active in the world, you will see an old white light force, which is connected to a hidden blue sun, the moon and the planet, about which I will also explain more in a later episode. Opposite to this is a dark cabal that draws people to Saturn worship with a black sun. They use the light of the yellow sun to lure people into misery. That the cabal is not happy with the existence of the moon is clear from the fact that in the last century it was investigated whether it was possible to destroy the moon. In 2020 it was revealed that in the 1960s there was a plan to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon. In the last century, however, it was also discovered that the moon was not so easy to destroy. Whenever collisions are triggered on the moon, this leads to an hours long shaking moon that rings like a gun. That seems to be the reason why the cabal is now targeting the sun, just as was done in the ancient Atlantis. Keep in mind that our moon acts as a reflector if we believe the ancient texts, and that it is described as a gift from the light force. By removing that reflector of the blue sun, we will enter a realm of darkness. Because they are unable to destroy the moon, they are now trying to manipulate the sun, so that the moon's reflective function may also disappear. Those in power currently intend to combine their desired great reset with a new change of the sun. They want to obscure and blacken the yellow sun so that it will look just like the black sun they worship. If that plan succeeds, the perfection of their Saturnian empire will be complete and during the actual change another similar evil deity will be able to show itself in the world that currently has no access to us. 
The celestial vault will again be abused and the portal will be opened again for a destructive force that will be connected to the new sun. Both this power and the then changed sun will not reveal good parts for mankind. This deity, also called the Antichrist or the King of Kings, will be an emissary from Saturn according to my research. At the top of the religion which focuses itself on the worship of both Saturn and the Yellow Sun are descendants of bloodlines from those who destroyed Atlantis and the former Blue Sun. These descendants operate in the shadows and for them the Black Sun has always remained an important symbol, especially at times when large groups of people have been massacred. An example of this is the Black Sun depicted in the German castle Wevelsburg. During the Nazi regime, between 1933 and 1945, Wevelsburg Castle served as a training center and meeting place for the SS. Many descendants of the Nazi regime from that time are currently active in politics. They now place again stamps worldwide on the earth, which are also a repetition of history. Those who have kept too little light in them, or sold their souls to the Black Sun, now fall for the repeated scripts and kneel and bend for this Saturnian form of leadership. Der Text spricht für sich, verstehe ihn und verteile ihn. Jack Atali schrieb 1981, damals war er Berater von François Mitterrand und er lebt heute noch und er verfolgt diese Gedanken seit nunmehr 40 Jahren. In Zukunft wird es darum gehen, einen Weg zu finden, die Population zu reduzieren. Wir fangen mit den Alten an, denn sobald sie 60 bis 65 Jahre überschreiten, lebt der Mensch länger, als er produziert und das kommt die Gesellschaft teuer zu stehen. Dann die Schwachen, dann die Nutzlosen, die der Gesellschaft nichts bringen, weil es immer mehr von ihnen geben wird und vor allem schließlich die Dummen. Euthanasie die auf diese Gruppe abzielt. Euthanasie wird ein wesentliches Element unserer zukünftigen Gesellschaften sein müssen, in allen Fällen. Natürlich werden wir nicht in der Lage sein, Menschen hinzurichten oder Lager zu errichten. Wir werden sie los, indem wir sie glauben machen, dass es zu ihrem eigenen Besten ist. Die Überbevölkerung und meist nutzlos ist etwas, das wirtschaftlich zu kostspielig ist. Auch gesellschaftlich ist es viel besser, wenn die menschliche Maschine abrupt zum Stillstand kommt, als wenn sie sich allmählich verschlechtert. Wir werden auch nicht in der Lage sein, Millionen und Abermillionen von Menschen auf ihre Intelligenz zu testen. Darauf können sie wetten. Wir werden etwas finden, oder verursachen, eine Pandemie, die auf bestimmte Menschen abzielt, eine echte Wirtschaftskrise oder nicht, ein Virus, das die Alten oder die Fetten befällt, es spielt keine Rolle. Die Schwachen werden ihm erliegen, die Ängstlichen und Dummen werden daran glauben und sich behandeln lassen. Wir werden dafür gesorgt haben, dass die Behandlung vorgesehen ist, eine Behandlung, die die Lösung sein wird. Die Selektion der Idioten erledigt sich dann von selbst. Sie gehen von selbst zur Schlachtbank. Die Zukunft des Lebens, Jack Atali, 1981, Interviews mit Michel Salomon, Sammlung Les Visages de l'Avenir, Edition Seger. Jetzt ist es an dir, nachzudenken. Jetzt ist es an dir, diese Information weiter zu verteilen 
Und jetzt ist es an dir, zu verstehen, was für dich die richtige Entscheidung ist. Dein Klaus von Grenzenlos Leben Those who still carry the light within them know that we now have the opportunity to turn the tide of the earth and they don't submit themselves to the dark rulers. They protect their pineal gland from damage and know that this tiny organ offers help to find the way to the real and in my opinion old blue light. The earth is at a turning point and we live in a turbulent but interesting time. It is a period that can be compared to a personal weighing moment because at this moment every individual is forced to make choices and thus needs to show to which group he or she belongs. Are you one of the docile subjects or are you a reformer? Are you embracing a new opportunity for earth or are you scared and rather prefer to follow orders? There are a few questions you can ask yourself to find out whether you are more of a light worker or would rather hold the yellow sun in your heart to finally welcome the black sun. You may ask yourself if you serve good or evil during your daily life and whether you long for a new era or for a new world order. Are you willing to bow to the tyranny that blinded so many eyes or are you able to open up your eyes for the old light? Now is the time to analyze where you stand because in the end you will no longer be able to hide behind the crowd. I intend to reveal a lot of forgotten and wiped out information.